Okay, before we continue with uh, our polynomial long division, because we're going to do one really large one right now just to finish off uh, long division of polynomials, just a quick little update. At the beginning of this series, uh, I mentioned that I was going to grow the beard again. As, uh, and as of October 1st, I uh, you know, decided to uh, kick that into gear. So uh, I'm going to uh, be uh, bearded chicho again and instead of a clean-cut chicho. So uh, you're slowly going to see uh, beard growing. And um, for anyone that can grow a beard or who has thought about growing a beard, I highly recommend living with a full beard for at least one year. In uh, North America anyway, uh, at least in North America. I'm not sure how it works out in the rest of the world. Because uh, uh, your perspective changes, um, your interaction with the world around you changes. Because others pe other people's perspective of you changes. Um, it's just a side note because when you grow a beard, other people see you as bearded, right? But when you look out out of your eyes, you don't see a beard, right? So you're still the same person as you are. When other people look at you, they see a beard instead of clean cut. So their perspective of you changes and that affects you in a certain way and your perspective of your surroundings changes. So again, just a side note, if, uh, if you've ever thought about or if you can or, uh, grow a beard and if you ever thought about growing a beard, I highly recommend living with a beard for at least one year in Canada and the US. Uh, I'm not sure what the situation is like in the rest of the world, okay? couple things before we start off on the long polynomial long division right I already mentioned that you have to put your terms in descending order right so if you have x to the power 4 that has to go first and then x to the power 3 2 1 0 or your constant right so all the x's all your terms have to be in descending order both for your product your uh, your divisor and your dividend and your divisor okay so all your terms have to be in descending order. Another thing that you have to keep in mind, which goes back to series two really, where, where we talked about you know, adding like terms, right? If, so if you have x to the power of two, you can't add that to x to the power of three. And this comes, um, th this is really important when you're doing long division of polynomials because sometimes you're missing terms. For example, you could get a polynomial where you have x to the power of four and then x to the power of two. So you're missing your x to the power of three. What happens is you might not have your terms lining up with the proper order. One thing you can do is just keep in mind that you know you can't add like terms, so the highest order goes first when you're adding it. The other thing you can do, which is what we're going to do, is put a place marker for the terms that are missing. And the place marker would just be zero x to the power of whatever that is missing. The reason we're gonna do this is because it comes in really handy with uh, synthetic division. Synthetic division, you can do it without place markers, and we will talk about that. But it comes with super handy for synthetic, uh, synthetic division, and we're gonna, do it for polynomial long division as well, okay? So we're gonna put place markers for any terms that we're missing uh, when we're putting them in descending order, okay? So for example, if we have the following, now this isn't the one that we're gonna complete, okay? This is just to show you how you place the place marker or put in the place marker, okay? Uh, so if we had the following uh, long division that we had to do, Twelve x to the power of four minus five x squared plus five divided by three x squared plus two x minus one. Okay, so they ask you to do to do that long division, right? So you're going to set it up in your long division format, and again, you're going to look for what do you multiply three x squared by to give you twelve x to the power of four? Well, that's just going to be four x squared, right? So you're going to put that thing up there. So. We multiply 3x squared by 4x squared, and we're gonna get 12x to the power of four. Now, for our dividend here, we didn't have the x cubed term, and we didn't have the x term, right? We're missing the x cubed term, and we're missing the x term. So what we did when we laid it out here, we put in zero x cubed, and we put in zero x here, and those are are place markers. That way we don't make a mistake of adding 8x cubed with 
you know, my negative 5x squared, right? Because if we didn't put those place markers there, this guy would be here and the 5 would be here and we might make a mistake of doing that, okay? So what we do, we put place markers there, that way everything lines up with descending orders. Now, if your first term in your numerator here, in the top here, was a really high order, let's say it was x to the power of 27 and the next one at x to the power of 12, you're not going to sit there and put zeros, you know, place markers for all the descending orders going down, right? All you're going to do is make a mental note that, you know, from series two, you already know that you can only add like terms, right? So you have to, you know, keep, you know, keep in mind that you cannot add terms that are don't have the same power. You can add, only add like terms, and you would forget about putting the place markers in. And just keep that in mind, and when you're doing your subtraction or addition, what you would do is just make sure you're adding like terms, right? Right now, and the, the odds are, you're, you're not gonna get too many questions, or you're not gonna deal with too many polynomials, where you have, you know, x to the power of 27 and x to the power of 11 or something like this, right? You're not gonna be missing too many terms between your terms right so what we do initially right now just 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 to you know get the process going so we learn you know we learn how to do it and then later on for more complex polynomials we can you know just keep a mental note that you can only add like terms so for these types of polynomials all we do you know questions that are you know low power all we do we put place markers here okay so what what we can do right now is we put the place markers and multiply the whole thing out and if you had anything missing in your divisor as well, right? In your denominator, you would also put place markers in the denominator as well, right? So what we do is multiply the 4x squared by, you know, this guy, this guy, this guy. We get this term here, change all the signs and add them. So when you multi, you know, change all the signs and add your terms together, your first terms just kill each other. This one added together, zero x cubed is just zero, right? So all you're doing is just taking negative x cubed and just bringing it down, right? The other term you add, you know, negative five x squared plus four x squared, which is gonna be negative x squared. And what I do, as soon as I finish that, I bring all the terms down, okay? Over, over on this side, I bring everything down. That way, you know, you don't have to continuously look up right so again what you're gonna your question you're gonna be asking yourself is what are you gonna multiply 3x squared by to give you negative x cubed okay now these 3 and 8 don't go together very evenly right and some people have a problem with this so one thing you got to keep in mind is you can always get fractions up here and we're basically gonna stop doing this right now but what I'm gonna show you is how to figure out what you multiply 3x squared by to give you negative x cubed okay and this is the way you should you know you should be really thinking about it, right? So what you're asking yourself is, what, the box is what, you know, what are you gonna multiply three x squared by to give you negative eight x cubed? So all you do to figure out what goes inside the box is divide both sides of the equation by three x squared. And your result is gonna go there, right? Negative eight, x cubed divided by 3x squared the x squared reduces the x cubed down to x so just kills down kills the power in the 3 to 1 and these guys you can't reduce anymore so it just stays negative 8 on top and 3 in the bottom so what goes up top is going to be negative 8 x divided by 3 so what you can do is figure out what you multiply 3x squared by to give you negative x, 8x cubed, and you just put that thing there just by doing, you know, you wouldn't do this exactly at the bottom of, uh, you know, your long division format. You would take this and do it on the side, right? That way you leave enough, you know, you're, you're leaving your space, your workspace empty so you can continue your work. So that's how you figure out if you have fractions, if you have things that don't multiply evenly together, that's how you figure out, you know, what you're gonna multiply them by to give you your, you know, terms that you need to be able to eliminate your first term in uh, you know whatever the process is when you're doing the long division okay so keep this in mind um, it's just basically you know putting in you know putting in place markers putting in place markers where you're missing you're missing the x 
you know, the X terms, whatever they might be, it might be X to the power of four, it might be X to the power of three that you're missing, X that you're missing, or whatever it is that you're missing. We're gonna put zero X to the power of whatever it is that we're missing to put place markers. That way our terms line up so we can add or su add, add and subtract them, okay? Now, let's, uh, you know, go find a bigger space and do, a, you know, a large polynomial long division. And we're gonna write out the division statement. And we're also gonna look at it um, graphically to to show what it looks like graphically what it what it means graphically when you're writing out the division statement which is just basically taking one function multiplying by another function and then adding another function to give you your you know numerator your original function or whatever you're starting with uh, in here okay